All right. Last class, I assigned uh, the photo montage project, and your homework for today was basically to come in with research, with images that you looked through, basically ideas to create this fantasy, dreamlike, surrealistic uh, scene using multiple photos, bringing them in together uh, to make one photo montage. So to start off, I'm going to minimize this here. Actually, I'm just going to close right out of it and pull up my photo montage pictures. I have a few different pictures that I'm thinking I might use. Um, I'm going to start with this picture. I've called it cage. I don't know why. Um, and that's going to be the setting for my image. I'm going to start by just opening that single image into Photoshop Elements. Okay, so this is going to be the setting. I liked this, the way that lighting played off of the walls here, um, how it hits the floor. I, what I didn't really like is the backdrop, what actually is in the, uh, the door and the window. It's kind of boring to me. There's not much going on, not much interest. So it's the perfect candidate for a photo montage because in a photo montage you can change uh, the background or you can change what happens in the foreground and make it whatever you'd like. So I'm going to be cutting this out in the, um, the window and the door and putting something behind it. There's lots of different options that I could do. I could create a totally different scene. I could create a landscape happening back here. Or I could, um, what I'd like to do is to create somewhat of an Alice in Wonderland giant person outside of a dollhouse um, looking in here. So I have a picture of my sister's face that I'm going to plug in behind uh, the door and the window here. All right. So in order to do that, I'm going to go back to my folder and I'm going to bring the picture of my sister uh, let's see, I think I'll show you guys uh, a quick how, how the landscape could look behind it as well. All right, and I can open both of those into Photoshop Elements. All right, so now all of those are here. Oops. I am going to drag them into the primary image. Okay, so you guys have seen this plenty of times. I'm going to drag over, hold down shift, and let go. I'm going to drag from here, hold down shift, let go. Okay, and I'm holding down shift um, all the while. That's the last thing that you let up. I, I know that that was kind of confusing um, how I explained that before, but shift is the last thing you unclick. Okay, and that'll have it go right into the center of the image uh, where you're going to be working. So now we can close out of these. And I'm going to unlock my layer. You can just double click and click OK. Now that layer is unlocked, and I'd like that layer to be above the others because what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a clipping mask, the, what I showed you guys last time to create your multiple exposure images, and we're going to create a clipping mask on this layer so that we can mask out uh, the window and the door, which will then reveal whatever's beneath it, um, which is going to be any of these images here. Okay. And what I notice is that when you do create that clipping mask, if you have an image that is smaller than your... Uh, than your image above, like this one is, um, then the clipping mask does something kind of funky to the top layer. So in order to remedy that, you can just create a new layer, bring it down to the bottom. This is just going to be a base layer, and I'm going to fill it with black. Okay, That just solves that problem um, of what happens when you have a smaller image beneath. Okay, So first thing I want to do is create a clipping mask for this layer. In order to do that, I'm going to go to our levels layer, and we're going to create an adjustment levels layer. I'm going to bring that beneath this layer, and then I'm going to click on the top layer, and by hitting Command G or going to Layer, Create Clipping Mask, we will then link that layer to this here. That's what I showed you guys last time. Um, I know it's a little bit complex, it's um, a tricky way of doing it, but I'm going to keep repeating um, how to do that just because I'm finding it to be the best way to cut out a part of a layer. Um, that way you can go back and tweak it if you cut out too much. You don't actually lose it permanently. Uh, you can always go back. It's very flexible in that way. Okay, so now what we can do with our layer mask clicked is we can start to select out that window and door. I'm going to start with the quick selection tool over here and I'm going to select my door space. In this entire tutorial I'm going to be doing this pretty rough. I'm not going to be selecting it as um, carefully as I would like you to in yours, 
Um, so keep that in mind. I'm doing this very quickly, as quickly as I can. Okay, so now that I have that selected, what I can do, since my layer mask is selected here, anything I paint black is going to make the layer that's connected to it disappear. Okay, so I'm going to paint black right where that door is, fill it in, and that will have the layer beneath it, layer two, show up um, underneath. Okay, so I can deselect. Same thing, select your um, adjustment layer there. I'm going to use my quick selection tool. I'm going to select this window. Now, as I'm selecting, I'm not choosing to keep those bars in there. If I was taking my time and really investing in this project of creating this Alice in Wonderland-like picture, I would definitely keep those bars. I think that that would add a lot of interest to that window. It makes it a different kind of scene than, uh, than the door here. So I would take the time to actually map up, out those little bars and keep them in there. But for now, we're not going to. I have my adjustment layer selected, so I can go over to my paint bucket tool, and I have black selected, and I can paint that in. I can deselect, and I can choose to move that layer around, and it's okay that this layer is a little bit smaller because I'm not choosing to show it um, throughout the entire image, um, but it is the same quality image, and I'll show you guys an image, adding an image from the internet that comes in at a different quality, how you can increase that and make the, it work with your own images that you've taken with your camera that are higher quality. So um, you can see how that works together. If I were going to use that as the backdrop, I probably um, would desaturate the rest of the image so that it matches um, in tone. You could do that with a gradient map above. Then you get kind of a cool surrealist uh, landscape happening out there. Um, but that's not what I'm going for in this one. So I'm going to undo that, go down to my undo history, and I'm going to uh, hide that landscape because that's not the image I'm going for. What I am going for is my sister peeking in on the scene, which is pretty cool. You know, you have that instant wow factor of um, someone who now seems completely giant, okay? Um, which is that surreal look that we're going for, okay? Make sure that you don't uh, show the edge of your images when you're uh, showing it through a window like that. Be selective with where you place things. I like that there. I can delete this layer since I don't plan to use it. I don't want to confuse things. <clears throat> All right, so I have something really interesting going on here, um, but I think it needs something else. I don't want to stop there. Uh, what I'd like to do is to possibly add something into my foreground. I have a nice setting. I have something really interesting happening in the background, but I don't have anything that's interacting with the person that's peeking in. If you were trying to go for a simpler look, I do like this. and. You, there's interest um, for the viewer, but I'd like uh, there to be another subject that's kind of playing uh, off of those eyes peeking in. Okay, so I'm going to add a picture of my nephew, which is right here. Oops. And I'm going to open it into Photoshop. And I'm going to have him, I'm probably going to flip him so he's facing the other way, and he's going to be looking up at those eyes. Um, so there's a lot of uh, tension that'll be happening between those two figures, which I think could be really fun. All right, so first thing I need to do is to drop my image in. Get your move tool, drag it in. All right, yeah, get rid of this project there. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this. I'm going to go to image, rotate, which we're not rotating, we're flipping, but it's all under rotate. And I want to flip the layer horizontal. I don't want to flip the entire thing horizontal because then the entire image would be flipped. Okay, so I'm just going to flip this layer. And I found a really great way to quickly create a, um, a layer mask selection um, for adding an image in. Okay, so I'm going to first start by selecting my nephew. Okay, it's going to be a rough selection. I'm going to select a little more than what I think I need. Okay. I might get some of the grass. I might get a little bit of the trampoline, but that's okay. Like I said, this is a rough selection, so I would want you guys to take a little more time on this, okay? Now that I have him selected, what I can do, and uh, this was much faster than uh, what I was previously going to show you guys, and I was glad to have discovered this method, is to, uh, the first thing to do to create the clipping mask, as we know, is to create an adjustment levels layer. 
If you do this with a selection already chosen and you click Levels, look what happens. He's already selected in that layer mask. All I have to do now is to drag that layer mask, whoops, drag the layer mask below and then clip him to it, Command G or Layer, Create Clipping Mask, and he's already selected because I created the Levels layer from the selection. Okay, so that is the fastest way to do that. When you guys are putting this into practice with your own photos, um, yeah, I, I'm going to put this little tutorial on, online for you, but also ask me for help in that um, because that is a definite time saver. Okay, so now it's a very rough selection. I can then go back because this is a layer mask. Anything that I paint on it with black is going to be erased, as you can see, and it won't show. If I erase too much, you can always go back in with white. And because I'm painting on this uh, layer mask over here, anything I paint with white is going to show back up. Okay? All right. So very rough selection. You guys would be going in, getting rid of all of this excess um, so that he fits into the uh, new scenery much better. Okay? If I needed to move him, which I do want to move him, if I just had this layer selected, that's just going to move the layer selection, and it's not going to move him and the layer mask. Okay? So what we want to be doing anytime that there's a clipping mask attached to our subject, you want to select both the layer with the subject and the layer mask. Okay? You don't want to select one or the other. So that way when I move him around, it's moving both. Okay? All right, so I kind of like him there. If I wanted, I could do a transform on those. Free transform. And I could make him smaller. There's lots of things you can do once you get your subject in there. Also, what I would do is I would work on the um, color tones of this. He's far too bright in the back here for the sub for the uh, the scenery that I just put him into. So you can edit these um, individually. If I just have this layer selected, we can go to Enhance, Adjust Lighting. I can go to my Levels. Remember, anything I drag to the right gets darker, so I'm going to darken my shadows a bit. I'm going to darken the entire piece, the mid-tones. So that way he kind of fits into that moody, dark scene that's happening around him. I'd probably uh, play around with that even more. Okay. Now, I don't want to go too much into detail on uh, that part. Um, like I said, the cut around the windows and everything, even though it was a pretty good cut, is still rough. So go back in and, and tidy that, those things up. Um, now, if I want to add something from the Internet, which I think most of you guys are going to be um, at least adding an image or two from the Internet, um, if you would like, I'm going to show you how you can do that because it's going to come in at a different image quality than your images from your camera. So I have this image of a butterfly that I'd like to place in there um, just to add some more interest around the door, door frame. And so I'm going to open with, oops, open with Photoshop Elements. Now before I put this picture of the butterfly into the final image, uh, what I want to do is I want to increase the image quality. Okay, I did search this on Google Images. I searched for uh, images that are labeled for reuse with modification. So that's the uh, licensing on this photo. It's I'm allowed legally to use this image and modify it. Um, I couldn't just use this image and call it my own because that hasn't been modified. So because I know it's going into a surrealist collage, if it's... If you use it and you modify it, yes. Um, you can say that this is your own work. Okay, so... Uh, that's what how you guys have to search for your Google Images, okay? Um, I also searched under large images. So because these are going to come in at a lower quality, no matter what you do from the Internet, um, you want to get as large an image as possible so that um, when it is compressed down, it will still look nice, even though it's um, not as high quality as the images that you're taking. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Image, Resize, and Image Size. As you can see, the resolution is 72 pixels per inch. The images that you'll take from your camera should be 300 pixels per inch. So that's what our goal is. Okay? Our goal is to get to 300 pixels per inch. Now, as I explained early on, 
Um, when you are increasing your resolution, you don't want to jump straight from 72 to 300. So I'm going to maybe bump up to 90. Click OK. Image, resize, image size. I'm going to bump it up to 110. When you jump straight to 300, you lose um, image quality in it because it's trying to jump, um, it's trying to add too many pixels to a certain part at once and you don't get the, the details. So by doing it gradually, um, you save image quality. It's hard to see, it's something that's hard to see with your eye, you know, it's something that you might not notice the difference. Um, but if you do it this way and you blew your picture up and made it a really large print, it would be visible in, in that print. So it's... I'm going by 20. I would recommend even going slower than that. I've been told going by 10 is probably you know, the best increment to go by. I'm going quick for the demonstration of it, but and I actually might even go quicker, just so you guys don't have to sit here watching me do this, but you should go up by, by 10s, okay? So we're going to go 300, all right? But, but that's a do as I say, not as I do, okay? I just don't want you guys to sit here watching me do that. Okay. So now I'm going to drag my image over, hold down shift, let go of the click, and then let go of the shift, okay? Now that my image is in here, I can do the same thing I did for the picture of my nephew, okay? I can select my image, my butterfly, and we'll go around. It does a pretty good job with this one because it has a nice clean background behind it. In the last class, I actually showed them um, going down the antenna and getting that detail. I'm not going to do that right now, but if you guys were putting a butterfly into there, take the time. Get that antenna in there, um, paint it back in. Because we're going to be using a clipping mask, it is flexible. You could go back in and paint the, um, the antennas in later because we're not losing this information. We're not uh, deleting anything. Okay. So I have uh, the majority of the butterfly selected. Let's see, at least as much as I think I need for now. And I'm going to do the same exact thing. So selection is, is there, the moving ants are going around uh, the butterfly there. And now I'm going to go to levels. And when I click on levels, my butterfly is already selected there, but I have to bring it below. Click on the layer above and then command G and that will add our clipping mask, okay? Now the butterfly is in the scene. If I just move it, what did I do wrong? I didn't do the what thing? What didn't I do? I forgot to select both of the layers. So undo, hold down shift, you can select both. Now I can move it together. All right, if I hit command T, that's the same thing as going to image, transform, free transform. See. The keyboard commands are nicely written in there for you. If you'd like to start using them, I highly recommend that. It'll uh, make your life a lot easier. So free transform is command T or go up into image. And now I can rotate. I can change, whoops, I don't want to do that because then that shrinks my butterfly. So I'm going to hit cancel, command T. You can decrease the butterfly size, which I want to do because he's very large right now. I'm going to turn it, maybe stick it on the edge of this uh, door frame there, or maybe in the corner. It's up to you guys. You're just going to be playing around with these things. There's a lot of experimentation when it comes to photo montage. I highly encourage you to just play around. Um, you have all the tools that I have just shown you. We've learned these from previous lessons. We're giving you more class time to work on these. Um, so just play around and, and use the tools and ask us questions about the tools that we've talked about. So I'm going to set that transformation. Anytime you're in free transform and that uh, box is around it, hitting enter sets the transformation. If you find that it's not letting you do something um, and it says something like um, transformation not set, just hit enter, that'll set the transformation and you'll be able to continue editing. Okay, once you have that, you can then edit colors. You can go to enhance, adjust color, hue saturation, um, this is when you get to just start playing around and making things look a little more seamless. We did say that this is surrealist, so which means it's not going to be realistic, but we want it to look as realistic as possible. So surrealistic. Um, so that butterfly is kind of really, really bright. I'm going to tone down the lightness. This isn't the best place to work on lightness. I'd say go to enhance and then uh, adjust lighting. 
but for now I'm changing the hue. Maybe I want to turn that blue to match her eyes. I'm going to bring down the saturation a bit because her eyes aren't quite that bright. Okay, so now, now you've got a nice butterfly that matches the eyes there. But it's still really bright, so click OK. Enhance lighting. So play around with lighting, shadows and highlights. See wh what you can do. I don't want to lighten my highlight or my shadows, even though it wanted me to. I'm going to darken some highlights, up the contrast. All right, so this is when you just start to experiment and see what you can do to make this environment more interesting, make it a little more seamless. I might change some of these highlights and things that are coming in that don't seem very natural on my nephew's arm there. Um, you could tone down, change the colors of, you could change the colors of the entire setting. So don't limit yourself based on one photo and feeling like everything needs to match to that photo. You can change the original photo that you're setting these um, figures and objects into. Okay. So I'd like you guys to work today on uh, what your surrealist collage setting is going to be, what's going to be in the setting, how are those figures interacting with the setting and with each other. Um, play around, don't limit yourselves, and get started. All right? Does anyone have any questions? Yep. You need it more than one. <laughs>